We got Detroit in this guy, motherfucker. <laughs> you know why you looking like that? I just left your house, nigga. Let's stop looking at me like that. <laughs> I'm listening to what you're Niggas saying, Niggas come man. in. And the nigga, I'm just at the crib. Man. Don't look at me like that. We got family here. Kino's here. He is family. Royce is here. Royce is family. What is your name, sir? Courtney Bell. Courtney Bell. Yes, sir. Tell us. Tell us. The floor is yours, Courtney Bell. <clears throat> no doubt. West side who the hell? Who the fuck are you? West side of Detroit, Michigan. The next one out the city. Rapper. Top tier lyricist, most definitely. For my generation. Top tier. Top how old tier you? lyricist for my generation. I just turned 27. Okay. So how you know you're top tier? For my generation and what I see from my perspective, viewing where hip hop is at, I have a love, a die hard love for hip hop. And like I grew up to y'all. So I followed y'all. I was just saying that in a uh, Breakfast Club interview yesterday. Like I studied the greats. I'm not going to call myself a great until the world says it, but I believe in myself and I know what I am. So I walk in that. Damn, he wants he want Joe over. When he good. said, yeah. I studied you. <laughs> no, Joe had a little smile. Shit. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 he's smart. I don't, I don't expect Royce to be around nothing for gazing. That's, That's all I mean. I, yeah. I, I, expect him, I expect him to smoke that. But y'all, Detroit and the wave that's going on right now in Detroit, and which y'all can speak to, and young niggas that feel like this, is why y'all made them Detroit versus everybody t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> and merchandise and hoodies, and y'all started a wave. And now it seems like there's an energy. There's an energy going on over no. there. Mm -hmm. Speak, speak to it, Royce, because that used to be a thing. We used to talk about that a lot. Yeah, I mean, because <clears throat> we went so many years without getting our just due. You know what I mean? Like Detroit was pretty much considered like a C market for like a long period of time. You know, like so M kind of kicked the door in. Like so, the hip hop side of things kind of ushered through. But it wasn't as far as the city was concerned. It wasn't really a. a I don't want to say a proper representation of what Detroit is, but it wasn't the exact representation of what Detroit is. You know, like being considered like a hip hop lyricist, the street, the street rap was a little bit more prevalent within the neighborhoods, but it wasn't it wasn't um, being portrayed to the world just yet. You know, so like one, with the evolution of like tech, the Internet, the Web, whatever, um, it just started happening. I think shit. T. Grizzly was probably the first one yeah, to first really one kind of set a precedent. And then in came the Sada Babies, the, you know, the yes. Payroll, Giovanni, mm -hmm. Vezo. Vezo got a record with Kodak right now. That's ridiculous. That's but, um, Vezo. Yeah. yeah. Ice Man. Yeah. So he just, he just signed, he just signed, the, um, what's QC? QC. 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 Quality QC. Control. Yeah. <clears throat> he just signed the Quality Control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we got Sada. We got, um, who am I forgetting? Babyface Baby Ray. 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 They Ray. also Ray. signed Ray. Baby Force. Money. Four two Baby Tron. Man. 42 yeah, Doug, Baby Tron. Baby I think Tron. Baby Tron just signed with Empire. Godsy is signing up a lot of a lot of people and from QC. Detroit. Yeah, Wait, and Doug is from Detroit, too. Yeah, 42 yeah. Doug is from Detroit, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a little Memphis thing going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Yes. I th I think, I mean. yeah, yeah, Detroit Memphis is... Mm -hmm. the, whole world, the whole world is kind of copying copying their style. Absolutely. Copying their style. They, they cool, they young, they fresh, they real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it's good to see us in, in this place, in this position. So you know me, man. You know, we came up in the era where we didn't really get embraced by the generation that came before us. Mm -hmm. It was more of a competitive kind of energy. So I just try to break that cycle and just kind of like try to be the change that I want to see. Uh, whenever I run into guys like Courtney, so enlightened, so enlightened, you know what I mean? Like the talent, that goes without saying, you know what I mean? Like it, we don't have like a, a shortage of talent in Detroit, mm -hmm. but people like him, he's so enlightened. It's the way that he thinks that I'm most impressed with, you know what I mean? Remember like when we first heard YBN Corday, but then when we seen him in interviews and got to experience some of his ideologies it was like, oh man, okay, like he he's important. He's not just somebody that's just dope. Mm -hmm. He's important and he he represents the right thing. Like usually when we see that, it's it's good for people in our position to kind of embrace that. If anything, it, at minimum, embrace them by calling them and letting them know how you feel about them. You know that goes a long way. Just, I kind of did that with him, but it, it just evolved into more of a a, a mentorship kind of relationship. So now, why why this young man? Yeah, I mean, exactly for what I just said. He's he's super enlightened. He's super enlightened. I like the way that he thinks, and I love what he represents, and I think what he represents is super important, you know? And he 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 lends a balance. He lends a balance to, to, to the way Detroit is being portrayed as well because he can toe the line between the street rap and just being, now that the street rap and the lyrical are kind of like separated categorically, 
the fans just kind of did that. They made being the lyricist mm-hmm. kind of like a subculture within the culture. Mm-hmm. So he's somebody who can toe the line and kind of like be in both in both worlds. That's so interesting. That's mm-hmm. an interesting way to put that. Yeah, so it's true. Yeah, and they yep. did make a subgenre. Yeah, they did. They did. So <laughs> they, they do that every it, couple of years. They, 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 call it, they call it. They call it lyrical rap. <clears throat> yeah, mm-hmm. they call it lyrical rap. You know what I mean? So he's uh he's somebody that that especially Detroit would put in the category as lyrical rap, but the way he the way he does it, he simplifies it in a way where it's, it's street. You know what I mean? And then he's also, he's not just jumping from category to category, but he's jumping from layer to layer as a man. All of the layers that make a black man, especially in Detroit, we have all of these different layers, but it takes a lot of self-confidence to to be okay with portraying them all without being, without fearing judgment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he's not picking a side. He's just giving you him. It's like Pac, you know, Pac. Pac would be right in the middle of a chick song and it just start dissing niggas out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> like he didn't he didn't conform to uh anecdotal uh structure, you know? How does and I'll ask this question for the entire room, how does that how does that lyrical rapper succeed today? What's the path? What has to happen for him? Cause I get a lot of times I get the lyrical rapper that comes through here and I fuck with him and be like, all right, so you TikToking, like, how you selling your shit? Like what you getting on? And they'll laugh. But that is a serious question. As a lyricist today, how do you highlight lyricism and progress? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, from my perspective, I feel like me being so multifaceted, like Big Bro just said, it's more so getting people to fall in love with the person. Because like, if you love me for who I am, whatever I do outside of that is an additive for me. So being a lyrical rapper and tiptoeing with the streets and all of that, that's what I walk in a daily contradiction. So it's just like you said, I I study Pac more than anything. And that's what like turned me on as a as a as a young kid falling in love with hip hop. Like I don't have to be a conscious rapper. I don't have to be a street nigga. Whatever I am is what I am. So I feel like it's just selling the real and just me being who I am at the end of the day. Like the TikTok and all of that stuff, we can do it, but I feel like we in an era of hip hop where Well can you dance? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, forget it, forget it. You know, you, you know that you know that one of the biggest problems that we run into as lyricists is um, we it's hard for us to find a way to be able to feed that machine, come up with that one record that mm-hmm. we feel is competing with whatever is is hot that's out. And I think phrases like irrelevant, current, all of those are the worst phrases to put into your mind as an artist because it just makes you think short-sighted. If you think of about anything that's ever been considered special or classic from any generation, it's always left to center from whatever is going on at that at that time. And usually whatever's going on at that time that's considered like the end thing is something that's trendy that, that won't last. Mm-hmm. So all of the classic albums, The Chronic, Equimini, Illmatic, all of those things were like the, the shift, boom, the thing that shifted it. And it was also the thing that that artist put a lot of time into. The focus was quality. And a good percentage of them weren't necessarily commercial successes. Yeah, because, I mean, because, because what, we, what we don't realize, we don't really think about this. We're not conscious of this, but we don't really like commercial shit. The world doesn't really like commercial. The world is being promoted to, marketed mm-hmm. to. Yeah. Mm-hmm commercial shit Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and the more obvious that the marketing is the more we tend to not really be drawn to that Yeah, you know what I mean so like the most organic shit is always the coolest shit like when Bobby Schmurter came out he's like a case study of mine when he came out you know he came out at a time where where DJs swore that there's no way they can play a record on the radio without a hook on it and Mm -hmm. it can never be a hit without a hook on it Mm -hmm. and he showed you that is a lie you know what I mean (laughs) And he also showed you what the fuck is a hit record? What is a hit record? What is that? Whatever's whatever takes off, and for whatever reason, even if it's just the one exception to the rule, everybody will play it if that's what everybody wants to hear. Mm. So the focus should always just be making music that has the most quality and ha- and can last for the longest amount of time possible. Nothing short sighted should be involved with the thinking process when it comes to creating. You know what I mean? So. And I don't think that um, we're as much in competition with other artists as we think we are. You know, like you get 
press releases go out, what people sold the first week, where they charted at. But I mean, that's more of a, to me, that's something that's more of a label thing. So labels know how they're monetizing things. You know what I mean? Like they're going for that big spike up front. You know what I mean? Because they own the masters. But if we as artists come in to the game, understanding the value of the master and understand the value in just having it exist on platforms, even if it's not a big lump of money in the beginning, but just look at look at each song more like an asset that can just be a stream of revenue that just goes for long periods of time. And then once you understand that, then you understand how to get in bed with these labels if that's what you choose to do. You yeah, know what as I mean? artists, you got to learn that, right? Like we know how to make the music. A lot of times we don't know, we don't understand how to make it be a stream of revenue. Yeah. So, and that's where the labels and all that other shit comes in. Yeah, and, and label labels provide that they provide that um security. They provide that they can place you in front of the world. They can place you on the big shiny stage where there's a there's an audience of casual fans. Mm -hmm. But your job as an artist is to, is to de develop uh, lifelong fans. You know what I mean? Like the fans that are gonna be at the shows. Not necessarily just because that's where the hose is going to be at, mm. you know what I'm saying? But the ones that are there because they want to sing yeah. every song so, word for yeah. word, oh, yeah. like your fans. My first 700 shows, there wasn't a girl there. <laughs> 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 Might be my first 1,700 shows, but they eventually they eventually came. But yeah, just that cult audience that fucks with you organically and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And I and I think once you once you have that. Once you like Frank Ocean or Kendrick and people who people just feel are important, then how you do it is really up to you. Like you have more of a finger on the pulse of how to engage your fans than any label could ever. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so I, that's that's kind of like what it is. So I think the focus should just be looking at yourself as a as a brand as opposed to somebody who's trying to jump into the mix and and exist the same way that somebody else is. Now, what are you two working on? What tricks do y'all have coming? Well, he's working on the album. I'm helping him out with it um, from a from a little bit of a distance, though. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to. I don't want to get too involved. I don't want to. Um, so you don't have him in a 1440. Yeah, no, I don't want <laughs> to project. I don't want to project right. too much of my my creative tactics and you know the way that I create things. Too much of that on him. Mm -hmm. I just want to allow him to develop. It's more of a mentorship relationship, um, um, helping him make the best decisions. You know what I mean? So he don't make a lot of the same mistakes that I made. And yeah, just giving him a place to create, develop. I don't have him signed to anything. I don't have him signed to like anything where it's like I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to start doing that just yet. Got it. You know what I mean? But I helped him, I helped him get a situation. He just closed the situation with Monarch. Um, so I guess I'm executive producing the album. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention it, yeah, 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 maybe so. I guess I'm executive producing the album, but um, I guess I can ask you, Joe. Do you do you think do you think that it's a way to do a deal with the artists? Um, have and have ownership of their masters and, and build a relationship with them at the same time, and it not go sour at some point. I don't. Yeah, I don't. That's why I've never tried to get into that. I think it, it should be one or the other, you know, like because you can't cultivate a relationship with somebody. And then they even if even, even if you co even if you look out for them so much in the beginning and it, and it creates an entitlement, there's always going to be that point where that person, when they get a little wiser or even if they think that they're a little bit wiser, that they look at that contract in retrospect and say, "Nah, why did he do that? Why did he sign me to that? We see it all the time. Mm -hmm. See, we, we see it all the time. This conversation based off the, the Irv interview. And I think you can. It may not be easy, but the commerce of the industry and the art of the industry, they are intertwined. You don't have to give somebody a bad deal, right? Especially if you have more of an understanding of how the industry works. But the business is necessary to get it to the masses. Absolutely, but there's no, there's no. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. There's no standard. There's no standard business structure in place right now that's artist friendly. That's, and, that's and and I challenge you. Present me present me with the inner workings of that contract where you own his master, but it's a good deal for him. All right. So if 
we make an agreement for X amount of dollars, whatever that X amount of dollars is, that you find is fair. And with that money, See, I invest. That's already, the, that's already out, the hiccup. We started out wrong already, mm-hmm. but I'm going to let you continue. Well, because as, as a label or as the business, we are the money side. We're not the creative side. We're the money side. True. We have to figure out how to monetize your art, right? And in, in order to monetize that art, monies have to be spent. So if there's an investment in your art and the deal structure is that I'm buying this, I used this the other day. If, if you bought a Picasso for $100,000 and then next year Picasso was selling paintings at $10 million, he can't come back and say, well, you only paid 100000 100, so I need my art back because I'm really charging $10 million. Well, this is my worth now. It's, it's, a, it's a deal. It's a negotiation. You don't have to rape an artist. Or 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 take somebody who doesn't understand the business, one to 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 make a fair deal. If I know what's best, then I should I should I should help. I should help. This is some of the jargon I've heard from mm-hmm. the niggas that it's steal, jargon. steal from. Me but that's jargon. not stealing. Steal from rappers. It is stealing. <laughs> Theoretically, he's right. It's stealing. Theoretically, Theoretically. we on Earth on the business on the business side. <laughs> so th- Theoretically, what he's saying theories. makes sense, but then I think it gets clouded. Um, it's a contingency because once the artist blows, then the deal becomes unfair. If, a, if, if an artist stays, eh, then it may not be as fair, but <clears throat> I mean, as unfair, pardon me. But now when that artist goes on to sell 20 million records, whatever they signed at that particular point is now way unbalanced. Well, well that's, that's assuming that the deal started off unbalanced, Right. No, if you said as, it was fair. You said no, it was no, no. a fair so, so fair could be 50-50. Fair could be 70-30. Fair is whatever those two parties agree to. But However. The, well, this, this is the one thing. On that date, at that time, yes. in that moment. True. Now, also. Once you, I sell 20 million records. Whatever's written on that paper. Is somebody came to me and said, yo, dog, you should own a master. Or somebody came in my ear after 20 million records sold. And gave me some information that I didn't have on when that I signed day. that yes. deal mm-hmm. on that, that is, day. That mm-hmm. is where it becomes. And now I'm fair. coming back to you. And that's where it becomes as the new deal. person with new information mm-hmm. and new understanding. And I would think that that's your partner's job to make that right. And you being an exec and somebody being a new artist, you just inherently have way more knowledge and information than that person on the other side of that table. So, you so I don't I don't think that Future woke up every day and was cool with his contract with Epic. So do I you, do not believe that. So do you think then what happens when the business person puts ten million dollars into the artist and it goes nowhere? Because that happens more than who you someone about, who selling. Who you talking about Universal? Universal? A million. Somebody like Universal? A million. Two million. Somebody three million. two He's right. people like us. He's right. I'm, I'm when talking, I, when we put I'm two million about, dollars. I'm talking about, they, they call those people tax write offs. Yeah. I'm talking I'm talking about I'm talking about somebody that you're building a relationship. But you with. gotta generate the money to write it off on taxes Damn, first. Sure <laughs> you gotta generate the money. You That's can't true. just spend two million and it's a and, tax, and it's write tax write off. You gotta generate the money to have right. something to rent. Not, not unless you have it. Then you're still spending your money. It's still an investment. No, I understand that part. I'm only talking about repercussion for the label when the investment doesn't work. What is that repercussion? So, 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 when the money is invested and you become a, a superstar, now you're doing movies, now you're selling clothes, now you're touring, you're making tens of millions of dollars a year. And Irv kind of said it in, in a great Spock way. Now, watcher. now, Irv, to his credit, was in the studio with Ashanti. He was making those records. So he has an even more valid point. But if I'm just investing my hard-earned money because I believe in your talent, you think that, is it fair that you go make tens of millions and I don't make anything? Do you take the last piece of property that I have invested in because you you created it? Well, how am I Because making, I bought it. How am I making my tens of millions, right? Like today, it may start with music and we have a, a music recording contract together. Mm-hmm. Right. Outside of that, I went and made a pair of flip flops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went and I was in a movie. I got a McDonald's. I sell Happy Meals. Based like, off of the success of your music. Off of the, yeah. Yeah. Music, yeah, but, yeah, music but what do I, what do I, what do I own? What do I own? 
You own all the stuff that you're making based off of the platform that we those created. Those are asset. Those are assets. That's just being hot. Yeah, that, that that slows down. And that's the problem with the music business because they tell the artists to go eat off of being hot. No, I, th I think there's a way that you can fairly pay an artist. I think there's a way that you can fairly do deals with artists. I want to hear how you think that while the master is not owned. Why, why don't they just make contracts on a sliding scale from the rip? They could do that. Or have incentive-based contracts where if you do reach these certain benchmarks or point marks, that your, your, your pay is now on a slide. Okay, let's say this. Artist A comes and he says, listen, I want to be a, I want to be a success. I need a million dollars, but I want to own my master's, right? And on my end, I say, and I'm not saying this is my position, but I, as, the, as the label or as the investor, I say, okay, that's great, but that's not a great investment for me. I think the master's, owning the master's gives me more uh, uh, leverage or more equity in this, in this situation, right? You have a right to say no too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so at that point, no one is is forcing anything. I think again, when you give these kids bad contracts and you hide language and you do these things, that's wrong. But an, a fair agreement is what do you need to get to where you're going, and what do I need to get to where I'm going? And I and I think to that's just fair. And I think to Kino's part. The new artist needs the money more than the money people need the new artist. I couldn't disagree more. Okay. So <laughs> if you go to Universal right now and you Joe Blow, the super hottest nigga out, who needs who more? In the I, scenario you're painting to me, mm -hmm. probably the Joe Blow. In my scenario, I didn't never went to that building. <laughs> see, see, see. I, <laughs> your scenario is not one of the norm. It's, but it's, see, here, here's the, here's the kicker with that. The Universal needs the idea of that Joe Blow. Absolutely, cool. absolutely. So that, that's that, absolutely. that's the thing I, I, I because because is. Universal is being painted to to the Joe Blow as the big corporation that can take or leave you. Mm -hmm. That's that's not tr true because Universal is is one or two people smartening up away from. Not even being able to exist. It's like saying banks, mm -hmm. right? We put our money in the bank. We don't really need banks. You don't. Banks need us. Correct. Boom. They both are true. Now show me how difficult it is to live in today's society without having a bank account. Only without information. I'm and just that's saying, what it. That's what so a mentorship took, comes in. Yo, but I just took it off the music business and I just threw it in business. Now everything is digital. You pay your bills online. You do this online. Apple Pay, all that shit is from a bank account somewhere. Mm -hmm. For a motherfucker mm -hmm. that's putting their money under the mattress, life is harder. Yeah, it is. It's that's harder true. to that's go true. get a money order and pay your rent. Right. It's harder and to go write listen, checks and pay your about, bills. And about, you have what, the option what, what, to do that if you want. You but it is harder. You definitely do. That's and, it. And so my thing is about now when somebody... You've been in the music business for 20-something years. Mm -hmm. You... Your second year in the music business, you might not have had the information to say, yo, I'm more valuable to the label than the label's valuable to me. That came with a 20-year education. Absolutely. Absolutely. But wait, time out, but time out, time out, time out. And he wouldn't have known that 20 years ago. We don't hear many, many stories of the 47-year-old man that understands English and can read and knows to get a lawyer and find But that's why we don't... We don't hear those stories. Hey, this 47-year-old rapper got a deal. <laughs> but that's the purpose of these of these types of relationships for us now, right? To give them the information. My job isn't to tell him not to take a deal. It's where are you trying to get to? Take a better deal. This is the best route for you, right? What do you want out of music? I don't care about all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's the same combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't care yeah. about all this shit. What do you want out of music? I want to shift the culture. What I'm in music for is to change the mind of my generation. What's the culture? I don't know what that means. Hip hop. When it's, I say culture, I mean hip hop. It's get tricky. But now, now listen, now listen. As 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 a, as a business man, he didn't say he, I want to own my masters. He just said he wanted to shift the culture. Mm -hmm. So if I if I give you enough money to shift the culture, then well, you got you what think. you wanted to, right? He's right. At that moment, mm -hmm. now he's twenty right. years yeah, later, yeah, you, you was like, oh shit, I shifted him, the culture. You catching them while his masters aren't as important to him as they will be later. But that's mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. my job to tell you that. But that's that's the grimy shit. However, no, no, is is we need to know what we're asking for in advance. So I would have the conversation as we're having in front of everybody. Okay, cool. You want to shift the culture, 
But you understand that can lead you no. down this Kino, road. Royce, now. The fuck Royce, up. Royce, 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 Royce. is 27. Royce. And that would be on yeah. the older side of the spectrum. When you start meeting the 18, 19, and 20 year old, you want them to have an understanding of how no, valuable their master's is. No, could no, be what I'm future. saying is this. I'm saying, I'm saying is this. I'm only speaking of our situation. Our job is to educate them in that situation. I'm saying how they get in that position, though. We already know that. We don't have people who tell us, like, okay, wait, wait. That sounds great to say I want to shift the culture, but 20 years from now, you're going to want something different. But, dog, that's... We got to prepare, we got to teach them and prepare them for that. Un- and that's not happening. yo, that's a learning curve in any business. Absolutely. That's just not applicable to music. That's 100%. Sports, that's, bi- that's corporate. That's all of that nigga, shit. listen. How yo, many- when you get out of college... They will abuse your dumb ass. When you go to corporate America, they're gonna stick their foot in your ass. How about, how about this? How many L's you took? In, how many? I mean, L's you took in houses before you figured out? Oh shit, that's just how this works. And that happens because you don't shit. get to go back and go to the banks and say, "Yo, all all the houses you right. fuck." No, I that, love I love that example. I'd like a I'd like an answer to that. Not a shit ton. How many? Guesstimate. Guesstimate the house. Of real estate jobs or jobs that I've lost money in. in, in just whatever he I'm just a, said. I'm a, the I'm house a, before you had right, to, cool. right, before a, you had to figure it out. Because at the end of whenever you learned that, know what you still knew how to do? What? Was build a house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was build a house. In this instance, that's a that's a false that's a false equivalent. In the music side, we're going to catch you at 19. You'll be fucked for the next 20 years in this contract. Mm-hmm. In this contract, your publishing, your likeness, all that shit, perpetuity, we about to have some Ain't fun. none of that in his contract. But in so real estate, some of these things, I'm not talking about this young man right now. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the difference between a real estate and a music. In music, survive this 20-year Titanic sinking, and if you still have value there, make money off of what you own. The like likelihood in that is low. That is a very mm-hmm. different. He can build a house. Look, whenever he get that information, I, I didn't know music deals be twenty it. years. Then they don't. Shh. They were. We have. We've never when, signed. When any. we came in, they were five, six, and seven album, album deals, deals yeah. and you did not drop an album yearly. Sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. You had to have the support of the building to drop like an the album. album. They yeah. had to give you permission. Yeah. Hey, Meek just went. Meek. Yeah. Meek. Yeah. Yeah. Meek just said this. Hey, I'm trying to drop my shit. And they won't let they me drop. They ain't let me drop. And we, and but, that, but you got to talk to that man about that. This, and this we kids know, right and now, we, we just straight doing song was. deals. We didn't know anything. I'm not about doing music. I'm no not doing album deals. I'm doing a 20 song deal. Master to me so was shit, the master though. in studio. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got to master this. After you mix it, you man, they don't tell you what the fuck you do with a master, or all the ways there is to uh, reap the benefits well, who, from a who's, master. Who's supposed to tell you though? Somebody. Ray Charles been getting his masters for 60 years. Like, when are we going to start holding each other accountable for like, yo, my man, you don't, you knew when I walked through that door, this was going to happen. You ain't tell me. Okay. Well, that's the point. We, we, the monster yeah, on we, the other side of yeah, the door. Yeah, but we forever. talking about the repercussion of things. That one little tidbit of information that Royce didn't give me or that Keno didn't give me or that the OG didn't give me, that one decision I make without that tidbit is lifelong. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the that's the resentment. That's, ask, that, that's, the, down, that's me, the atmosphere for the resentment right we, there. We're going to really ask the hard question. Today, 2022, I'm not in the music business. There's mad people in here not in the music business. You are in the music business. But I've seen enough <laughs> shit on TV that would say, yo, this is not the way to go. But when them niggas throw two and three million dollars in front of your face, niggas is still signing over. How many times you hear a nigga be they like, "They still doing it yo, today"? Make sure you got a lawyer, and then you hear three months after that, this yo, guy signed without a lawyer. lawyer. Yep. It's like what? That like that is true. We can't act like the Even information today, don't exist. That is true. He's we right. We got to hold each other accountable internally. He's right. He's right. Or yo, my, my lawyer job is, now is your lawyer. Is to help. Mm-hmm. This is from a little bit of shit I've learned and our fuck ups over 20, 25 years. My job is to get as many of us as I can to be like, yo, this is how you can structure. This is what they saying. But we was talking about this. My, me and Mike was talking about this last night. The contracts has been the same shit. Once somebody changes something and comes in, that becomes the norm. And it's changed. But I know for a fact, right now, you can walk in a record company and say, I'm not doing an album deal. I'm doing a 30-song deal. Cool. And I might drop six songs this week, 15 songs next week, this. And that becomes the new standard. People change it all the time, but you got to be willing to take what, what, what it takes to change. Nah, we don't cash, money artists, artists cash money came in was like, yo, cash money came in was like, yo, we owning our masks. We want 85%. Yeah, and it never became and blah, 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 blah. It never suck became standard. It suck my dick yeah, if you don't want to do this. What happened is they didn't, they didn't expect that to pop the way it did. So you know what? We give you that. No, they yeah. expect, oh, they shit. We ain't never. Wait, 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 wait,
Who didn't expect it to pop? You don't do that Univer- type of deal. Universal. Yeah. Universal. Oh, universal. Yeah. Universal. Yeah. universal. Yeah. Universal. Universal. Listen, 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 it was a story that Russell Simmons told, and I, and I know uh, Wendy said it. Russell said they had went around and asked everybody for that deal. He thought the deal was fucking crazy because he didn't even have that with Def Jam. But they didn't give a fuck because they knew what their value was. Yeah. And either you're going to pay us or we're going to go we back home and still sell this dope it with never, or without y'all. Never yeah. became the Yo, standard. you know what? We want to be in business with y'all. That became the standard. Royce. No, it didn't. Let me ask you no, a question. It Why no, you it didn't become the standard. Who else did it? It didn't become no standard. You, you know why it didn't? No but standard is nobody, another nobody, word nobody. they throw around to fuck you. Wait, wait, wait. When, when, when I say the standard, when I say the standard, when I say the standard, I mean this. He's right. Somebody else got to be willing to stand the same way they did. It was like, fuck that. I know what my shit is. Mm. Rockefeller did the same thing. Jay was like, yo, my nigga, y'all don't want to give us a deal? All right, we're going to make our own shit. And that's You don't want to give us clothes? We're going to make our own shit. When a nigga throw $4 million in your face. And you broke. Fuck your with naming, the stand. Fuck what? Yeah, I don't want to go to Rockefeller. Both of you are naming geniuses, and it's not the standard. Yeah. Sure. I think, okay, I think this. I think every nigga who do what y'all do is a fucking genius. Oh, that is. I just, say that all the time. Oh, they, they might be genius. I'm going to tell you why. I'm tell you why. No, 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 no. These niggas are not. Don't throw the genius word around. Wait, 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 wait. These niggas couldn't be. Listen. No, stop cutting me off. These niggas couldn't be stupider. Stop, don't genius me to death Albert with some Einstein, of these niggas. I, they say Albert Einstein couldn't tie his shoes. It don't mean he wasn't a genius. That's true. You a fucking rapper. That don't mean you're supposed to be a genius you in business. You could be a genius creatively, but not a genius I in business. I think what y'all do as as artists, cre- take it's, a thought and genius. create some other shit from nothing and create interla- intellectual property. That's a fucking genius. But you might not I don't have expect a you to understand business. Yes. Just like He's I don't right. expect a motherfucking accountant to be able to write a dope verse. He's right. Mm-hmm. He is y'all do it. Right. And I think it gets crisscrossed when a genius smart rapper nigga tries to be a genius smart business nigga because they smart in this area. Nigga, go hire the best in yeah, that area. And stop and stop, stop going, and to stop going, and stop own, going to hire their people. Yes. Yeah, sure. Stop going to the you record know, label and asking them to give you a lawyer. That's yo, their lawyer. You good at this, man. Let's allow a moment of silence for my brain to catch up to the bullshit. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, you are good at this shit, yo. I agree with him. I'm a the, thousand the people percent. that the artists out there that we're talking about, they are geniuses. But in their field, mm-hmm. in their artistry. Yes. Which is in the streets, which is wherever artistry lives. Mm-hmm. The second that we get to business land, if my genius can just be manipulated, taken advantage of, robbed, stolen from me, signed away. A word tricked out of me, then what the fuck is the point of calling everybody a genius? We here now. We in music but, business. But that's, we that's, not in music land where everybody that could do it is a genius. No, we over here now. And if we not smart here and they just taking our shit from us, then no. No. But that's why but, you're supposed to but hire. But that's why I'm going to hire the yeah, nigga that hire represents the nigga that's my best. Oh, yeah, but everybody don't have this. access to. I, and that's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. Someone that's hold good. Up, but that's why I said. That, hold up. Hold up. E, uh, e, we good? All right. Go ahead, uh, Kino. That's why I said we, on our end now, have a responsibility to reach back and, and, get, and start to give options. My nigga. Right? But at the end of the day, you are now in the music business. You are in the business of music. So, yes, you do have to be a little bit more cautious and careful in how you deal with it. I could be a fucking... There's a ton of athletes who lost hundreds of millions of dollars on fucking real estate and investments. They didn't know anything. They don't know nothing about that field. That don't mean that, that those businesses were bad businesses. You didn't research the business. It's a book on every fucking I thing. I hate to be grumpy. I don't like that example either. You yeah, I don't either. Athletes. Those are private companies. It's, what are? You, you know what? There's, there's no code. Athletes? There's no code. Yes. No. There's a there's a code in the street. Yeah. When you in the street and you jump head first into the drug into the drug game, you got OGs. You got OGs who instruct you. No doubt. Hell, fuck yeah! What? You got it. There's a code. Um, you got, yes. You got OGs no. that tell Not you today. Come that on. tell you Not today. They it's tell you the rules. They Not. tell you no snitching. They tell you how to do your time. They tell you every fucking thing. Royce, nigga, how they tell everybody they teach get you a fucking kill. manager. Royce, <laughs> you how get the music industry. Industry. And that's why you How to bag like. up, sell it, who to sell it Royce to, is when the heavy traffic's coming. No, Royce is 44. I'm 46. Yeah, you couldn't come outside and sell whatever the fuck you wanted to sell without some nigga saying, he's okay. That's blah, 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 son. He could come out inside so and sell. So what you disagree with? 
Today, them niggas is going outside, getting them a pack. They'll start their own block on their own. Some 22-year-old niggas that's wild. No, no, no. You, miss it. you misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a, it's, a co- it's, a co- it's a code. That's what I'm saying. It. No, no, no. Wait, there, no. Let me there's al- it's always been, I don't mean to cut you off, no. but it, there's al- it's always been in, in, in any generation, like kids just jumping into the street thinking they can just jump into it. But the ones who have OGs and shit like that who get taught certain things are the ones who, for the most part- Became more successful. If if you consider that success, yeah, that's what you, relatively, yeah. So, now. but but that's due to a code. There's a code. There's a code everywhere. There's a code in comedy. Comedians mm-hmm. have a code. Mm-hmm. DJs just stood up for DJs the other day. Yeah, they yeah. got a fucking code. Yes, Everybody got a code. And a Joe Rogan can call niggas niggas, and black people stick up for him because of the code of comedians. Mm-hmm. We don't and have you know, that code in the music business. No, we don't have a it's code, no code in because capitalism. we, we it's competing no, with it's each no other. There's no code in capitalism. It's, not a co- it's right. That's capitalism it's in business, America. Dog. There's no code. You either learn it, read it, rewrite it. And, and move forward and profit. I'm talking That's about. Capitalism. I'm talking about a code amongst young black people in a business where black culture, black culture, t- speaks f- for the biggest part of the market share in this He's shit. Right. Black Absolutely. culture that shifted the whole entire world. Jesus. We have to have a fucking code. Abs- uh, if we had a code, Nipsey would still be here. Tupac would still be here. Biggie would still be here. If we had a code, we wouldn't be yelling about the Grammys not recognizing us but, properly. But that's why I'm we wouldn't be screaming about the way that we're labeled at labels. And that's we wouldn't be I'm worried saying. about being considered urban and shit like that. And all of those we'd be proud to said. call ourselves niggas and, and be all, urban. True. That's the biggest fucking curveball we and, ever and right. threw at and these right. motherfuckers. And at that when moment, we, we gotta stand. The, we the, can't. The we shouldn't be going for the money. But yo, dog, all that shit you saying just proves the fact that there is no code. Yeah, that shit, what, stop, it. it's my go now. That's a myth that played out in the 70s and the early 80s. What? That code. Because these young niggas is snitching. You, Tupac died in the 90s. So now we fast forward into the 2022. So if niggas wasn't playing by the code in 97, what the fuck make you think they playing by it in 2022? I don't think ain't so. no fathers in these households and ain't no OGs looking out for no young niggas. The OGs is competing with the young niggas. Uh-huh. So what code do these niggas live by? They not living by no fucking code. It was a time where you couldn't shoot up shit where little kids was. And you couldn't shoot at niggas' grandparents. And you couldn't shoot at niggas' parents. That shit is long gone, my nigga. You my age, that shit is long, long gone. These 20-year-old niggas don't live by no fucking code. I'm talking about I'm talking about a code within the music business. You right. Without, but now without, the older artists that got culture. fucked, they fucking these young niggas. I know example. I can't tell an example yeah, on because, here. Because but it's a nigga that came on here that was talking all of that shit. And he just gave a nigga a fuck deal. Yeah, because we we feel like that we're afforded the luxury of a, of adopting the same business philosophies and True. tactics True. as the you same people who fucking us. oppress so us. So you know, you I, know why I always attribute why we've lasted in this business so long because we haven't had huge hit records or we haven't you know toured well we've toured the world but we didn't headline twenty million stadium, stadium yeah. tours. Our business model has always been it has to be fair for everybody. And sometimes it ain't feel good, but if a show lost or if a promoter lost money, I was always as concerned with that promoter losing money as we was getting money. So we've always maintained good standings. It's just worked for us. So that's our karma. So for me, and when I talk to them and him and his team, it's the first thing we talk about is how do you have longevity? From a creative standpoint, Royce is very vocal on where he thinks artists should go. From a business standpoint, one, you got to learn the business. You do. Secondly, you have to make sure it's business. If ever, if you continue to help people make money, you'll stay longer. It just is what it is. Will it work for everybody? I don't know, but it's worked for us. So I do think it's a way to be fair in this business and everybody eat. Everybody kids should be able to eat off this shit. It ain't right now, but all we could do is do our part on this end. Give me the example you see in that out there. That speaks to what you're talking about. We the example. Is it like another example? Save that for Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. And tell me the example that you see looking out, looking out that speaks to the what you're talking about. It it would it would it would. You said Brett Fire. See, I don't know his team, so it would take me to know the inner workings of somebody else's shit. It always looks good from the outside, right? I don't know how everybody else get down. I only know how we get down. I don't ask people how they do business. I only know how we do business. So if I said another example, it would be me assuming. And I can't do that. I can only say what we trying to do. And it's worked. 
We here. This nigga talking like he got a publicist and shit. I'm not talking like I got a publicist. Uh, yeah, nigga, yeah, what, am that's, that's, yeah. what am I saying that's not true, though? Uh, honestly. What am I saying that's I, not true? Like How long y'all niggas known us? This kitchen. What? I like you better in your kitchen. <laughs> this come up here and want to get publicity. It's I'm the, not. It's the pants, yeah. Yeah. They can't see the pants. You can't say no real niggas shit in them pants. And the can of the gooses. The can of the gooses. Yo, so I, I there's no fair saying. deal you've ever heard of in the music business? No, I'm asking. No, not, not what I not what I asked. I've heard of fair deals. Oh, okay. So how I'm asking, back to Royce's original point, and we don't have to harp on this. I don't know. Me. Not saying it don't exist. I don't know how the deal can be fair with me owning your masters. Okay. Let me say this. What about part of part ownership? That's different. That's my point. That's my point. That's the way to do it, You have to at least start there. It's the way to do it, though. There's no way to start from square one with me just owning owning your intellectual property. That's the thing. Like, things have changed. Because what they'll do, they'll put a benchmark in there that says you can acquire your shit. After 35 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I talk about the sliding scale, though. The sliding scale wouldn't be fair. And his team of verified And if you don't know, back to Royce's point, if you have zero idea what a master means... Then here, take my master. Yeah, you being taken advantage. <laughs> take my master, master because I because I really want this over here. Mm-hmm. They really want to be more famous than they want to yep. look at the long term. Because game. that's what's being I'm marketed tell you, to them. And his team will justify. They'll, they'll verify this. When we sat down and we talked about how to make this situation work, we sat down. We didn't talk about money. We talked percentages. They gave me some numbers. I said, "Tell me what y'all think is fair." They gave me some numbers. I gave them some numbers. When they came back with their numbers, and they'll tell you this, I said, "You know what, bro." We can never eat more off this or at uh, this percentage off y'all. That's Take strange. this back and make sure he good. I didn't even talk to this nigga about it. Then I talked to him. I said, yo, by the way, this is what we agreed on. This is what they were willing to do. But I knew we we don't deserve this to do this. And he was like, nigga, I was like, you cool with that, right? He's like, nigga, I don't even know why you asked me. <laughs> That's fair. Really? Anything else that happened 20 years from now, if a nigga decide, because... We don't like the way we all act. I can't change that. But when it came down to sitting down and looking at how that dollar worked, I listened to what they felt was fair first. And I said, yo, my man. And it it didn't seem fair to me. I said, yo, this is what we'll be comfortable with. Yeah, so tell it like it went. So, so, what? (laughs) That's how it went. Yeah, you was like, Royce ain't gonna go for that. Royce ain't gonna go for that. Nigga already said, we already agreed on the number before I even talked to you. Yeah, you said Royce, you told me. You called me and said Royce. After I agreed to it. Yeah, you didn't you, know. You, so you, how it went, nigga? You was the last no, no, nigga. No, no, I'm talking knew. about the conversation. I'm talking about the conversation because I know you, how we do business. You know nigga. how I feel. You know how I feel about that. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like you just said it, nigga. We in business together. How you feel is how I feel. It ain't no separation. Nah, we, nah, dis- nah, we nah, disagree on the business shit. side. That's what sometimes because you approach it more business, and which you which the way that you approach it, it makes sense from a business standpoint. My thing and how we started this whole business. topic was how difficult it is to toe the line between yeah. the two because the business side is never focused on even attempting to understand the creator. The business side is always looking at the creator like, oh, he just on some creative that shit. That ain't true, my nigga. I just said it from the I'm talking about the the atmosphere. It's, that's that's very See, true. I don't care what that atmosphere say. Well, we dealing, we dealing with, with, we with dealing in standards. We, we dealing in standards. But we we change so, the standards. So that so that so the the agreement that we have is nothing even close to standard. You know what I'm saying? Like it's nothing, it's nothing close to standard. Period. I don't so know. The, the agreement That's why I that, want to get that standard. Yeah, the, the agreement I mean, that we have, he'll, he, he'll he'll never turn around years later and be like, damn, why y'all why y'all sign me to that? That's it's, that's not gonna happen because of the, how fair the agreement is. In that moment, it's the same way the nigga took a fifty thousand dollar advance and gave away his masters. In that moment, thought it was fair. Shit changes all the fucking time. I feel that. Success well, now, change every nigga. Well, now, it do. Yeah, that's, that's my true. thing. That's, I that's, just want to sleep at night. That's what I say to Roy. Like, you could sign somebody to a good contract, and if that person don't know it's good, then they might just run off and say whatever about yeah. this shit. Yeah. <laughs> or you could do something personally to offend them, and now they're looking at everything. Funny. What, but it could be a million things. It's important to continue to educate them. That's yeah. what I think. Well, I think you're also right about it. You could sleep at night. Yeah. I mean, that's all. Yeah, like, at the end of the day, yeah. that's all I care about. Yeah. Like, a million dollars, 500,000. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd rather go try to do 500,000 10 times and sleep at night than do a bad million dollar once and have to, like, it just don't make sense. Mm-hmm. All of this shit we're talking about is for crazy people, right? <laughs> Honestly, I think nah, that means it kind of is. Honestly. 
all of these all of these businesses and corporations and shit who don't know anything about the music business who are throwing money at music right now they it, all of that is a play for masters that's a catalog play oh yeah sure. listen they're looking it, for though. catalogs so i love it yeah so it's like what, what what what's a fair what's a fair way to buy like to get somebody invest in somebody's masters and keep it without them being knowledgeable enough to understand the value long term of owning that asset but do the but they do coming the in they coming in and smelling blood cause, because they it's a bunch of assets just all yeah. scattered about and, everywhere. And, 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 uh, and, so and, and why this resonates to me, when I got my deal and I went in the label, like, I didn't know shit, and I didn't know I was trying to be inquisitive, but boy, I was in all the little departments and the cubicles asking questions and trying to figure it out. That's important because we come into some shit that's designed to keep the info from you. Yeah, you, yeah, you can ask yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck you yeah. want to ask. Yeah, the more you ask, you the more that you are viewed as a disruptor. Yes. Ah, but guess what? Every business. It is every true. business. And it was crazy as we live in a time now where being a disruptor is what it is. People want to disrupt industries now. Mm -hmm. That's where the money is. It's disrupting industries. Uber disrupted the industry. Nigga. Airbnb disrupted the industry. Them EYL niggas in that Yo, tour they just gave, they are disruptors. Disrupting the industry. Y'all telling that's the where secrets it is that now. were held by yeah. white corporations for decades. And guess decades. what? The reality is this. <clears throat> Motherfuckers paid a lot of money to get information. That's, true. that's the new hustle. That's true. I'm going to sell you information mm -hmm. that I have mm -hmm. and you're going to pay for and it. And it may or may not be accurate. Not and it may or may not be yeah, accurate. Not but guess what? Dog. That's a new way of doing shit. If one of y'all niggas came out with a music business class and y'all gave new artists information on how to properly receive their contracts, look over their contracts, keywords for their contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No bullshit. Y'all can pack a room for five thousand oh, dollars. Like you. that. We plan to. That's that's that's, like what that. the, that's what the heaven experience is. But Information is that's, selling that's more than out. any product out. So this that's is the, so this is the, 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 the first sold, step of what it is, right? We started having conversations just even even about watching labels how watching the amount of artists that's that's dying and going to jail and on you know getting hooked on drugs or overdosing. When we started talking about mentoring or artist development or however you look at it, like to me, giving them the information, right? When you get that ten million, that million dollar deal, having a team to 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 understand how how to spend the money, that's artist development. Figuring out how to deal with social media, so when you got a hit record, you don't go home and get your head blown off. That's artist development now, right? These artists aren't being developed, but that comes from giving them information now. Yeah, there is no more development. There is artists. no more development. They're not doing that. Anymore. You don't have to tell a kid how to write a song no more because it's, it's no standard for that. But it is it is a standard on how to deal with press and not in terms of how to speak in press, but how to make sure that when you say the wrong thing, you don't you don't end up like a lot of these young brothers is. Or when you get all of this money, the first thing you don't do is go put, throw money back in the streets to get some packs or to go buy some dope. That's artist development. They're not being developed. You're getting kids a shit ton of money to talk about their pain. Why wouldn't they celebrate it? It's, yeah. it's like you're, you're rewarding them for, 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 for PTSD. So they think is right. There is a way to give these kids the information and profit and grow a business. It really is. And that's from being a disruptor. Standard ain't even a, a cool word in no industry no more. You a disruptor? I would like to think I am. <laughs> I would like to think I am. No, Joe Biden.